You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Call. I've got Brad Hunt beside me. Today's guest, again, is Ryan Lampers. Mm -hmm. This is the last of a multi-part discussion that he and I had the other day, a.k.a. Stealthy Hunter. We talk today about mule deer and yeah, mule deer kind of go on the tangent of mule deer, and, and we go on a little tangent on what it is that it's a good discussion. I think. Yeah, I do too. You know, what do you? What makes something special? Yeah. What makes an animal, let's say, sort of a unicorn, other than two hundred inches on a mule deer, for example? Like, right. Um, yeah, it's a it just you know if there's a story that relates to a buck, you know, I mean, basically it relates to like sentimental value and. What that trophy means to you that might not mean anything to anybody else, you know. You're right. But just, we, we have our opinions because mm-hmm. there are definitely uh, some horns hanging on our walls, some Euro mounts here and there, some yep. some that have a special place in our heart. But to look at it from an outsider's perspective, you're like, oh, that's just a mediocre buck, whatever. For example, <laughs> um, coos deer in Arizona. My first coos deer, my second coos deer right. with a bow. Both of those... If to look at it as an outsider, you're like, uh, but to me, they rank up oh. there in terms of like personal sentimental attachment. I think my greatest, my favorite, deer, my favorite animal of all that I've ever taken is actually my Arizona mule deer, which mm-hmm. is not anywhere near the biggest mule deer I've taken. Right. Uh, or taken with a bow even. But we hunted that buck for so <laughs> but, long. But it's just like the odds and the pull it off. Everything about it just just yep. was special so we get into a discussion similar and he talks about his daughter, daughter paley she took her third buck this year third yep. year in a row and this was a buck that she had history with that we tried to get the first year yeah he so, tried to get so the second year three years ago and then three years this buck had to be seven years old yeah at least maybe eight yeah and what's ironic and this is tough conditions it lives under yeah like oh absolutely brutal like and to relocate that deer and for it to be that old thing was smart yeah but when you look at it you know we'll let you listen to the podcast yeah okay because i think i'm gonna throw this out there ryan i think you oh mark livese because i'm pretty <laughs> sure mark could have shot that buck last year <laughs> yeah, he could have. <laughs> eli was like let me shoot him let me shoot him and i found the shed off that buck and i was like i'm like ryan Dude, is this the same buck and animals with history yeah that i don't know man what is it what is it i i'd have to like why why do we why does that mean more right exactly i mean you know, and 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 then also the area you're hunting or the, the quality of game that are in that area and then the terrain. I mean, yeah. you know, we you're get putting into, in so much work or whatever. Yeah, we get into all that on the mm-hmm. show, and I, I think you'll find it interesting. Let us know in the comments, man, because uh, I think you guys will relate to this. You know, there's always the haters, and that kind of yeah. sparks the conversation a little yep. bit is what a, what a hater will say kind of. Or, I, you know, a hater, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's the right term, but, you know, just someone who who looks at you from the outside or looks at a trophy or, or an accomplishment and then belittles it to an extent. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think, um, we've all been there if we've hunted very long, yeah, even absolutely. our own buddies will do it to yeah. us. You oh, know? Absolutely. And, uh, absolutely. so it's a good conversation. Check it out. Uh, we have a big giveaway going on right now with peaks equipment. Every mm-hmm. 10 bucks you spend gets you entered to win a new peaks teepee, uh, PSE bow, yep. black Eagle arrows, Canvas an cutter. Everly stock or no, this is an initial ascent backpack. Yes. Um, you get the Everly Stock Bino Harness, the new Recon Bino yep. Harness, which I'm actually really like. Crispy man. boots. Crispy boots. There's a whole bunch of stuff in arrows. there. Arrows. Six grand. Mm-hmm. If you use the code GRITTY, not only will you get a discount on what you purchase over at Peaks Equipment yep. right now, you'll also be entered to win this big hunt package. And then we have another big giveaway with a Mark V, a Weatherby Mark V rifle. Yep. With a Leupold scope on it. It's a 6.5 RPM and a sweet, sweet rifle. Uh, the setups are worth more than two grand. Yep. Uh, if you want to be entered to win that, just buy a hat or shirt yeah. at uh, the Gritty Shop. And um, right now, if you go to briancall.com, click on shop, you'll find all the hats and shirts there. Mm-hmm. And uh, every purchase uh, of 10 bucks or more gets you one entry to win the rifle. We'll do, do uh, both giveaways we're going to announce on December 18th. Yep. So get in on those. Uh, if, the, uh, if you see something that's out of stock at Peaks... 
uh, just sign up for that little uh, text message or email notification. Yeah. There's there peaks is being constantly resupplied every every five to seven days with mm-hmm. big shipments. They just sell out quick. There's a high demand. So if you just sign up, you'll be you'll be uh, you'll be notified and you can get in on this giveaway. And uh, right now, if you leave a comment on our YouTube channel uh, on the latest video yep. that we have, which is this caribou hunt, um, you can win an Everly stock backpack. Yep, that thing's worth about four hundred fifty bucks, depending yeah. on which bag you get. But yeah, about four hundred fifty bucks. For and the if frame you aim sh- in the bag, and if you share the video on uh, on Instagram, mm-hmm. you will be entered to win something from Peaks. Yeah, whatever your you choice. want, your choice. So. That's what we got going on right now. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. Uh, I thank you for letting us uh, do our promos all the time. And um, <laughs> yeah, it surely helps us out. That's for sure. It sure does help us out. We appreciate so, it very, very much. Uh, tune in today. I hope you like the episode. It's an interesting one. Like I said, leave us a comment. I'd really love to know what you guys think yeah. um, about this subject. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. We've got footage people have never seen of your daughter from last year. Mm-hmm. Killing a stud buck. Um, yeah. The footage, the hunt, it's a cool. I need to get that produced. I always feel like those are the most important films we produce are the ones with family, you know, our kids, things like that. And so the fact that it's sat on the on a hard drive for a year m- makes me feel intense levels of guilt, you know. Um, <laughs> and. Oh. I know Paley's looking forward to it whenever it does drop. She's she's excited to go back and watch how that, that hunt that we did last year went. Um, and then this watch. year, this year, yeah, a story this, came to a close of a yeah. three-year saga. Gosh, yeah, it's a, it's a buck we saw three years ago. And um, yeah, we finally put him down this year on this this recent trip that we got back from. And that was the entire goal and all the discussions that her and I had building up to this hunt was, is that buck going to be there, number one? Is he still Because you, he was there last year, too. Yeah. And you almost him got him last year. year. He gave us the slip somehow. And then, um, yeah, fortunately, when I messaged her that I had found him, um, she wasn't there yet. She was at school. But I, I found him again. It was like, mm-hmm. all right, well, now we know everything we're going to do on this hunt is going to focus around that buck. Um, you know, we would have went someplace completely different if that buck wasn't there and we didn't know um, that he was there. But once it was like, given that he was there, we're all in on this place and, and we're going to try to try to relocate that buck. So, you know, that'll be a cool little story to tell. It was It was a lot of fun and... She's an absolute superstar, man. She did great. Had a great hunt. Um, always shoots well. Oh, just, she's amazing. She's just packing animals. She's 13 and just, man, yeah, boys beware. She's <laughs> she's a strong kid. How did uh, the film uh, turn out? Got some good we, stuff? Good stuff. We good. We captured everything. We had so much time to set up on, on this and, um, the stock from where we saw it was long and snow was deep and, you know, the weather conditions weren't great. And, um, yeah, we got to talk everything, had plenty of time. We found him bedded up again, you know, as one of those and, um, just knowing how she shoots and she's getting more comfortable with just shooting my rifle. She's just dead nuts with that thing. So, um, we took a shot that she wouldn't have taken three years ago, but she took it this year and could not have gone up and set that bullet in a better spot. So, yeah, unbelievable. She's just always impressing me with with her shooting skills and how she's just willing to go with me and, and go wherever I ask her to. You know, she doesn't... Uh, she doesn't give me the snarl face as if I say we're going all the way over to that flat top. She just goes. So, yeah, super impressed. It's pretty neat. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see that. Do you guys have kind of a time frame? You think you guys might drop that? Oh, we're looking at dropping that um, <clears throat> probably in going into January there, front end of January. Okay. So um, we're going to have two two films coming out in January. And yeah, those will be on our channel, actually. Yeah. Kind of a different deal. 
So yeah, really excited to do that. It'll have um, a couple of films. Both films will be with my daughters in them. You know, a hunt that I did with Tana, and then uh, a, this recent one with my daughter Paley. So yeah, hunting with the family. And um, that's going to be on a on a stealthy YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and but they can also find it through your website. Where's it'll your YouTube? Links? Yeah. So yeah, it'll be on there, stealthyhunter.com. You can go through and find uh-huh. other things on there. So. so if I go online right now and I look for stealthy, our YouTube channel, by the way, is uh, pretty pathetic. <laughs> we haven't done much with it at all. But uh, okay, here it is. So it's uh, oops, stealthy hunter. <clears throat> we need to grow this thing, brother. Like, oh man, it's uh. We've never, ever put a focus <laughs> on that thing, but we're going to now. All right. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see uh, more. you got quite a bit of content on this page. Yeah, I see a lot on there. Doing, yeah. doing important things with health, yeah. There's more there than uh, than I than I realized, so I'm going to have to check out some of this. Um, mm, stealthy nutrition, chocolate protein, coconut ice coffee smoothie. And there you go. Yeah. Some recipes. Okay. <laughs> we need a little more of that. <laughs> and your pretty wife is on there teaching people how to how to make delicious food. Absolutely. All right. So uh people go out and follow Stealthy Hunter on YouTube and um sign up, hit that notification bell. So mm-hmm. when you drop your films in uh, January, yeah. Um people will uh will be already signed up, but yeah, that would be I'm excited. Um I'm excited to see see that space grow and uh, yeah. to see the hunt. I wasn't able to go. We were we normally we're doing a lot of hunts together, but um, we just had tags in various places and so much going on. And but this is great because we were able to capture two times the amount of footage because we split up a little bit. And I'm yeah. excited to see um, yeah this hunt that I didn't get to go on. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we. We were hoping you were going to show up out there, but uh, yeah, too many things going on every which direction. So unfortunately it didn't happen, but uh, hopefully next year we'll get back into the all hunt together on the, on that same last hunt of the season. One last question on Paley's buck. Okay. <clears throat> it's three years. Like we have video of him the first year. Um, I think you guys have video of him the second year yep. and, and now you have video of him this year. You take the buck this year. I mean, he almost looks like year to year to year. He looked almost the same, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So we got good photo video of him that you got three years ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, she was bummed when she didn't get to shoot him three years ago. I know. I know. It was the very first buck she had ever stalked in her life. And he got away from us that night. But, you know, for folks that have seen that film of yours, uh, we ended up with a great buck anyway. It was, it, it worked out perfectly. Um, but yeah, the bucks antlers, he's never be going to be a four. He was always a three, mm-hmm. uh, a very unique three, just the way his fronts kind of curled up like that. Yeah. Um, very like as soon as half second, I throw my glass up. I'm like, that's him again. Like I always knew every time I'd see him, there he is, you know, he's still alive. Um, old buck, he, uh, he wasn't a young buck three years ago. No. Um, and now he's he's this much older. And yeah, his rack hasn't changed much. It's gotten heavier. Um, yeah, would you think found, he's seven or eight years old? Probably, yeah. Kind of has to be at least that range. Probably yeah. seven range because of how he looked three years ago. Um, we found an antler, a drop of his, uh, two years ago, last year, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and it's like the identical antler to what he is, man. It's crazy. But just a little bit heavier. One of his sides, and it gets his right side, kind of drooped down a little bit before it kicked up. But no, you look at it, you look at his rack from three years ago to, to where it is today, and uh, it's almost identical. But he's definitely matured and gotten a little bit thicker bone to it. That's what I was going to ask is uh, how heavy – are those bases on him Com- you know you think yeah, compared he, to he's an old buck good roman nose gray faced old buck he's he's got the bases and um you know a lot of these places 
you don't see a lot of heavy antlers, you know, mm -hmm. um, in some of these places we hunt, they're more of a thin horn. So, but you start seeing it when they get almost over the hump and they're just almost on the regress. And this one was probably his last good year. Um, his base has thickened up. Definitely. Yeah. It's really interesting because <clears throat> people judge, um, you know, hunters in general, they kind of judge, uh, um, the skill of a hunter often on the size of the antlers, you know, that are taken on an animal. And there's certainly, uh, some truth to that, right? Uh, it's not easy to kill a mature animal. And sometimes but, it coincides with age, you know, you get the biggest racks on the oldest deer. Exactly. And not always the case. Sometimes the oldest deer are regressed and they're wanky and, um, I don't think there's anything as special as just taking an old mature buck that's in his prime or even a little bit past his prime. Um, it's I, like, special. I like those bucks. Yeah. I like it's those special. Bucks best. I mean, um, looking at, <clears throat> looking at her first buck, dude, that thing reminds me of like Popeye. Like when I think of, <laughs> it yeah. wasn't the biggest body deer and his rack was certainly not, not uh, giant. Crazy. But it was thick, and he bossed everybody around, even though all the other bucks were bigger. He, but he had this, like, bristly, tough attitude. Like, he just was a so old... He, yeah, he was standalone as well, because I had seen that buck the year before that mm -hmm. I took her out there on her first hunt. And I had watched her buck bristle up, same spot, linebacker in on these other bucks and just walk them out of the country. Nobody fought him. He just would come at them and they'd just move out. And uh, I watched him the year before do that. And he was regressed already. And then mm -hmm. we relocated him uh, that year that she came out and another year regress. But um, like you said, didn't have the biggest rack, but he had attitude and he was just old. He's just mm -hmm. older than the rest of them. Yeah. And what a perfect buck to take, especially for her as her first year, you know, just a really cool. And you know how they get when they get up past prime, they get yeah. just gnarled out and, you know, lumpy and just yeah. kind of goofy. Those, those are the best, best bucks, I think. Well, Levisay's buck <clears throat> this year is a stud. Like he just, it was such a cool deer and you can tell just by the size of the thing's body and and the worn teeth and the face and everything that um you know he's just an older older deer he had eye guards too which was you know a major plus right i mean oh yeah oh, i yeah. love that but you could see like his forks were not deep at all especially in the back and i don't think that year over year he's going to get any bigger than he was like that's yeah. just him yeah and uh and in a lot of areas you know i think the trophy uh, really is as all about the area you're hunting and the age class of the animal in terms of a sense of accomplishment. If we just went out and shot any buck, we could be done often on day one. Mm -hmm. We want to, we want to chase. It's part of the, the experience. You know, if, if you set uh, an expectation to find something older, there's an element of difficulty you're adding mm -hmm. self-imposing on the trip to learn something about yourself and to learn something about the animal and, and to have a little bit of a challenge and adventure you against the outdoors, you against the, the uh, intelligence of an animal that's in the instincts that have, that has survived the passage of time for quite a while. There's something special about that. And um, <clears throat> as I've got more experience and I've hunted so many different places, I've been blessed I've realized that certain areas there are there are bucks like the one Paley just took that are top of the class in terms of that sense of accomplishment, the specialness of the animal. Yet the antlers don't necessarily yep. communicate that to the layman who's looking at it from the outside. You know? Yeah. Oh, it's true. I, you know. <clears throat> I, in fact, I just got a comment the other yesterday from someone and I usually don't respond to comments, but somebody noticed they, they just saw a picture. They just saw a passing picture on Instagram and they're like, um, basically way to take the bigger buck and not let your daughter take the bigger buck. And they have no context. They have no idea how, how this hunt went. And 
you know, for folks that don't know, yeah, I did end up taking a, a buck, a good buck, but, um, we took Paley's buck first uh-huh. and, um, you know, whoever this, this, uh, basement dweller was, you know, he just, <laughs> he just doesn't see much. He doesn't know how the hunt went out. And, um, he assumed that the buck that she took wasn't on par with mine. It was two steps above mine. He was a much older deer than what I got. Yeah. And there's a backstory. And his, that was the buck that she wanted. That was the buck. I mean, Brian, she will pass on deer to get a buck that she wants. We've seen that multiple yes. years now. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, that's what she did <laughs> on this one. There's a lot of deer we saw. Um, but she wanted that big three and just knowing he was there, that's why we went for him. So she got the buck she wanted. Um, and I was able to take a buck after end of the day, after we got hers all broke down, we just happened to get ready to pack out and looked up, found another buck. So we went and got that one, but, um, that's yeah, what there's I mean. a lot of, a lot of cool history to hers, the chase for three years to finally cap <clears throat> it with that buck. Yeah. You look at the antlers. Um, it's, this isn't a buck that's going to score high. This isn't a buck that uh, a trophy hunter, I guess would go for to, to, you know, go for inches, but, um, there is no better buck to take for her and me because of our history. Um, it's a heavy old deer and that's it. That's, that's exactly what we were hoping for. Yeah, that, that's exactly, uh, it's so easy to look, somebody send a, you know, a comment, you're going to get these, but a guy wrote in and said, uh, on the video of Cal's buck, uh, he said, He said, um, do you guys shoot anything big, like anything 150 or better? Mm. <clears throat> and, um, you know, when I get comments like that, um, usually I just kind of ignore them, whatever. Um, but I also, sometimes I'm in a mood, and so I respond with mockery and derision and ridicule. <laughs> um, I've seen those responses. Yeah, I kind of am like, I'm like, no, no, never. We've never killed anything over 150. Um, we'll try. Maybe someday we'll get on your level. We're just doing the best we can. Thanks. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> because the comment in itself is just, it's a way of saying, I shoot bigger deer than you. Mm-hmm. I'm better than you. You're not all you think you are. Like, that's sort of what the comment is saying when, the, when the, in, in reality, when they're asking that. It's not a sincere question. Um in a sense. And so I don't respond with sincerity. No, it's, a smart, it's a smart ass guy it's making a smart ass comment. So unfortunately there's a few of those out there, but, um, thankfully the lions should get it and they're not, they're not that immature about this stuff. I mean, you know, uh, it's been said many a time, like it's not all about these antlers. It's cliche, but it's not, these hunts are a blast. Um, and when you find a special buck that you're going for, I don't care if he's 150. I don't care if he's 120. If he's heavy and old, mm-hmm. that's a buck willing to go for and take. Um, so that's always going to be the goal. I'm not going for numbers at well, all. Well, yeah. I and, um, about. you know, I shot a, a bull elk, um, only had two days. Uh, I, shot, I shot him on the second day and we packed him out. I only had two days. I wasn't being particularly selective. Uh, and we bombed in with llamas and Livesey. We got, uh, Eli, a cow elk, and I shot a bull the next day. And, um, it was a tough hunt, you know, it was just two days, but it's a, uh, but it, the, I loved it. I loved it. And I wasn't putting on myself like this. I needed meat, you know, I had a freezer debacle and I'm like, all right, I got my moose and caribou, which is great. But, but, uh, I need a little more than that. I didn't like the shortage we were experiencing. And I feed a lot of people besides just my immediate family. And so yeah. I was like, um, and, uh, just, I didn't get a bull with my bow and I, they're just, I needed some elk. And so I, I did it. And there's, there's something special about what, what, what I brought home for me. And it's probably one of the smaller bulls I've shot in a long time. Don't care. It, like there was, because as I was thinking about it and how much I enjoyed it, cause I just didn't had fun. It was fun. And I came back from the hunt and I was thinking, there's so much more to these hunts than the animal you take because the, the snow, the sheer numbers of elk we saw in terms of just young bulls and cows and 
seeing the the trophy country we were in and that's really it like the country is as much of the story the remoteness the difficulty that we self-impose on these sort of do-it-yourself public land type hunts they that is in itself the trophy so sometimes when you do those hunts all there is available that you were able to find is what you found and you took it and yeah. that's enough, but yeah. we pushed it. All you can do is come back and go, you know, I did the best I could with what I had. I didn't, I left everything on the table Yeah. and, uh, and this is it. And, and be, we, of course we want that giant, but it's so much more than that. Yeah. Well, and for example, <clears throat> like the hunt that we cap our year off every year, it's right here in my home state of Montana. There are so many other places we could go if we were just going for a giant, old, big, heavy, tall, wide rack. Mm -hmm. There are better places to go hunt, but I couldn't care less. Like I just love the area. I love the kind of the, the country we're in, seeing the animals in that environment, the harsh conditions. We'll do that year, or we'll do that deer hunt every year for as long as I can, knowing there's better places to go that where we could find probably higher scoring bucks. But it doesn't matter. I love that that area. I love finding bucks, seeing them in the future, seeing years down the line, you know, a buck that I saw three years ago. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, and um, there's something about that, and I love it. And uh, another little <clears throat> example is I was looking through some photos the other day and, you know, Livesey came with us last year and he shot a buck. Um, and then I looked back in my photos and I got photos of his buck the year before. Now the no year way. before his buck was older or not older. It was, uh, it bigger. was bigger. Mm. The rack was actually bigger. Um, so it shrunk a little bit the year that Livesey shot it. It was just weather conditions, but, um, yeah, history with that buck as well. So. I don't know. It's, it's fun. And again, um, if numbers were a thing and it was all about killing 200 inch bucks, uh, we definitely wouldn't be where we're at. We'd be going yeah. to other places. So. Well, like that, that buck I shot with you a couple of years back, um, 30 inches wide, that thing, you had video of him too. You almost closed the trigger on that, that buck a year yeah. earlier. I had found Another buck that I had saw, very first buck of the trip, um, big old thing, had some stickers and kickers to it. Saw that buck, he disappeared. Well, in the time between me finding him again, I saw this big 30-inch buck, got some video of him, laid down, proned out, putting pressure on the trigger to kill this old thing, and then I stopped, and uh, I let him go, and it was six days after I first saw the buck I wanted till I saw him again. And I ended up getting that one that I went for. He's so, giant. Yeah. It was a great, great big buck. Um, real unique to the area, but yeah, it worked out is, uh, we found him again the next year and, and you took him and he's a big old wide, heavy giant bodied, probably one of the bigger bodied deer I've seen in that area in a very long time. So that was cool. He's a special as well. He's a special buck. I mean, just the sheer size of him was special. Yeah. Um, one of the things, you know, about that buck, <clears throat> you know, for me, it was special. You know, seeing the video uh, that you had captured of him the year before and just seeing the sheer width. I mean, crazy. Just boop. He didn't have much in terms yeah. of like points and all that. But, um, but there, he, he just... It, immediately the first time I saw him, my heart raced and I'm like, I wanted that deer. Like you have this instant connection. There was no, do I want him? Do I not want him? Like, it was like, I'm in, like, I want that deer so bad. And, um, again, when you, when you look at him compared to, I hunted Alberta, I was lucky to go there and you see bucks that dwarf him like 10 a day, you know? But still, like, the specialness of this buck, and he was old. He was really old in this area. Um, when I have him here in the house and I'm looking at him, and I have my Alberta buck just shot with a bow, like, right next to him, and I'm like, that buck 
that I got with you on that hunt, it, it holds more sentimental and personal value to me, even though someone who would walk into this room would be drawn to the drawn Alberta. to the Alberta yeah. deer. Yeah. And and I shot it with a bow, which which was challenging, but when you stack up the challenge between Alberta bow and the buck I took and the rifle late season buck I took, look, Ryan, there's no the the, the challenge of the, the latter buck far exceeded it even even though the weapon choice was more was easier mm. um it just is a more special uh thing and those are things that people that that had, weren't there and and don't know it don't know those are those are that's why each trophy in my house is sentimental in a different way and holds a different value and some of my biggest oldest age class animals or the animals that may not be that old but just have massive set of antlers they don't they are not uh the the ones that hold the most uh, personal value to me ironically yeah yeah no it's true 100 percent um some of my favorite bucks are just the ones that i know how hard that you can remember that hunt very vividly um some of the racks that I just kind of gloss over are the ones that were almost too easy, <laughs> like a sec, <laughs> like a second day buck or something like that. Yeah, which is why we try to avoid those early in the trip bucks. Yeah. you've noticed. Um, so yeah, the ten days, the last days, those are the ones that jump out. Um, those are the ones that make the wall, and uh, those are the ones that have the best stories. So yeah, so far I feel like uh, my daughter has gotten three that had that specialness to them because yeah. there was a grind to it. There's a good story to it. Um, you know, last year's buck was a very last day, last hour of the last day buck that she took and made a great shot on. Um, and then this year's buck was just a really, really cool story as well, you know, having history with it. So now those are the bucks that mean the most by far. And I think serious hunters, they know that, um, you know, there's always yahoos out there that like to throw those little comments around and they just don't get it. They may be doing it for the wrong reasons, I would venture to say. Yeah. But um, no. often the guys that really, really are good, uh, most of them, they only um, they only uh, support and value um, these types of adventures because I think they get it. A lot of times it's the guys that think they know a lot but don't that are really like uh, – the negative Nancy's out there. Yeah, for sure. Yep. It's limited though. It's really not much. I mean, look at, I think we have on our video, we just dropped, gosh, I don't know how many views. We're like 20,000 views in 12, 12 hours or something. Yeah. Man, that, that Ryan Lambert is handsome. Yeah. We got like a thousand likes and 400 comments. You know, we love, I love a lot, a lot of positive of, comments. It's, that's the community I want to build. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool seeing. Uh, you know, five years ago, there was a lot of negative folks. It seems as if, but a lot of those people have just gone away. <laughs> they've yeah. been, they've just been kind of forgotten. So, yeah, it's been a fun journey. So, um, anyway, well, I'll let you get back to your day. Thank you for coming on the call in the on the podcast today. It was really fun to to catch up and uh, kind of just. Yeah, we'll have to hang do out. it again and and uh, go over the moose after the next couple episodes so to drop and yeah. talk about uh, what happened there. Kind of fill in the gaps, I guess, because like you said in the beginning, a lot of the days we were there get dumped on the floor. They never get seen. So yes, a lot of discussions we could have for sure. We'll do that. In the meantime, folks, check out the, the Gritty Hats shirts. Get yourself entered to win a rifle from Weatherby. And uh, check out Stealthy Nutrition. If you don't have the the medical kit or the glassing pad or the rifle cover or CBD, go over there, check it out, support Ryan. We appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in and stay gritty. <laughs>